everyone, I'm Jojo and this is The Sound of Jojo. Well, given that I saw Hamilton on Sunday, we have to talk about it in some capacity. Now, obviously, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, it's not going to be a straight review. It's not going to really be a review at all. I'm not going to be talking about the production as I saw it in this video, because there was just so much going on and that I want to talk about and so much that I completely missed. And since I'm going to see it again in two weeks, I thought I might be able to give a more cohesive review after that. So that will be coming soon. But I will say right now that it is phenomenal. I loved it. Everyone was amazing. But as I said, we're not going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about how nobody in the show gets a happy ending. So I made a video about Peggy last year and whether she was in Act 2 at all and for some reason that has just blown up. It's got like 2,000 views and I got four comments on it in one day and it's kind of insane. So I'm glad so many people like that video. So for today we're going to be branching out and talking about everybody's ending of just piggies. I also made a video last year about how The Sound of Music doesn't have a happy ending and I mentioned this exact thing about Hamilton in that video. Saying that how Hamilton, like Sound of Music, is based on the real lives of real people, you can't really get a happy ending because happy endings don't happen in real life, not in the way they do in fictional stories. I'm not just making a broad generalization here. I have gone through every single character's ending and indeed not one of them is particularly happy. So just before we go any further I am going to mention that I am doing this musical exclusively. For this video, for the endings I am talking about for these characters, I am talking about it in exactly that way, the characters. Looking at the endings they got in the musical, not necessarily what they got in real life. I guess if you factor in history that isn't brought up in the musical, then the endings might be a little different. So we're just going with what we hear in the musical. But the first ones are pretty quick and easy. So Alexander Hamilton gets shot. Aaron Burr is the guy that shoots him and has to live with that for the rest of his life. Eliza lives for another 50 years after her husband died and does everything she can to preserve his legacy and tell his story and doesn't live to see it happen. Angelica's ending is purely musical. Her ending was very different in real life, but she ends up languishing in a loveless marriage in London and she only returns after her brother-in-law has ruined the family's lives. Speaking of Alexander ruining everybody's lives, the last time we see Washington alive in the show is during Reynolds' pamphlet and he is looking at Alexander with a lot of disappointment. He was pretty sick actually when he died. I mean he was actually getting up there in years for 18th century lifespans, but he didn't die from old age. But again, not counting that. Last time we see him alive during the show, he's looking very disappointed about what Alexander has just done. And now on to the double casting roles. And I think simply being a double cast role means that your act one character does not have a happy ending. If you're out of the story just like that, then your ending is probably not too good. So let's start off with Hercules Mulligan because he is almost the hardest out of all these characters to work out because his ending is very very ambiguous. He just kind of disappears. I mean obviously he disappears because the actor plays another role but story-wise he just disappears. We don't get to see what happens at all. Now in reality I believe he, along with his slave Cato, were captured at the end of the war, or at the very least interrogated. So not the happiest ending RIL, but we never hear about him again and while that doesn't necessarily scream bad ending, it also doesn't scream good ending. Lafayette? We never get specifics about Lafayette but we know he's in trouble. Jefferson brings it up at the end of Captain Battle 2 and we know Lafayette's clearly in trouble. He got thrown in prison and Angelica tried to organise a prison break for him, which is hilarious. And as for Madison Jefferson, this is another reason I wanted to stick to the musical exclusively, because their endings in the musical are directly tied to their interactions with Alexander. The endings they get in the musical would not even be close to what you would call an ending. 
in real life. But the ending they have in the musical is the same for both of them. They have to acknowledge that their enemy made significant positive contributions to the country and that they wouldn't be there without him. Mariah... Mariah didn't even get a happy beginning. She's trapped in an incredibly abusive and unhappy marriage and she has no agency whatsoever throughout the entire story, which is why I feel the most sad for her. Out of all the characters, she's the one I feel sorry for the most. Despite her joining in the line at the beginning with the other ladies, me, I loved him, she is very clearly going along with the plan at her husband's orders. I don't know about any letter. He didn't mention a letter. There is no way she went to him of her own free will. And if she did, her husband turned it around on her so quickly that that doesn't even matter. And Peggy? Well, I made a whole video about that. And it seems to be incredibly popular. A lot of people believe that the reason Eliza runs in to stay alive reprise already wearing a black cloak is because Peggy has just died. And as I said, I've got a whole video for that, but timing-wise, that lines up. Peggy died a few months before Philip. A lot of people even say she's coming directly from the funeral, which, no. If Eliza was coming directly from Peggy's funeral, you would think that at least Alexander would have also been at the funeral, and you would think if that's the case they would have arrived together, but they don't. Also, in an earlier version of Stay Alive Repress, Eliza's opening line was, I was sitting with the children in the garden. Not, is he breathing, is he going to survive this? So, mourning Peggy? Yes. Coming from the funeral? No. Like Hercules Mulligan, Peggy's ending is a bit ambiguous, she just kind of drops out of the story. But with what we see in Blow Us All Away and Stay Alive Repress, we can make some assumptions. And as I said, the double cast Act 1 characters, almost by virtue of being double cast, don't have happy endings. And our final double cast roles, Lawrence and Philip. Well, me, I died for him. That says it all. And King George went mad. Now obviously with him it's a bit of a throwaway jokey line in the song, although it is a reference to what happened in real life. But King George doesn't really have much of a bearing on the overall narrative. Even if you want to say going mad has too much to do with history and not enough to do with what we actually see in the musical himself, well, he loses the colonies, he'll be back? Well, not at any point that we see in the show. And there you go. All of the principal characters in Hamilton and how none of them get happy endings. Now obviously I will admit I don't think they're all equal in terms of sad, but let me know. What do you think? Do you agree with me that these are the endings the characters get in the musical? Or would you say the show gives them another ending that I've missed? Obviously, as I said, some of them are a bit ambiguous and flimsy, but that's just because we're solely focusing on the show. And if you're down here in Australia and are able to see the show, go see it. It's incredible. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my video next week. So long for a while!